and welcome to Soccer Conditioning, Training Get Fit Like the Pros. My name is Jen and I'm going to be introducing you to this course. I'm a licensed soccer coach and certified personal trainer. I am co-instructing this course with Dr. Jacob Barcock, a well-known and successful professional in the field of acupuncture and neurology. We are excited to be sharing this knowledge with you and hope you have many takeaways on how to improve the fitness of your soccer players. Some of the topics we will be covering in the course include fitness components, acupressure, overtraining, and nutrition. Within the course is supplemental material you may wish to download or print. For an example, under the overtraining section, PDFs provide additional information about each acupressure technique and what you need to know. This course does not focus on skill development for soccer players, but rather the fitness aspect of soccer. Before designing a training program for soccer players, it is beneficial for a coach to have knowledge of each fitness component and how it relates to the game of soccer. If coaches gain this understanding of how to make players fit, implemented during training, the development of skill will come easier and overall play performance will be improved. But what about small-sided games? Can't I just condition my team that way? Small-sided games definitely have their place in training and do offer conditioning, tactical, and technical benefits, but they should not be the only way to condition athletes. Players should engage in small-sided games for the technical and tactical benefits more than the conditional benefits. This is why we specifically outrun fitness components in the course to focus on during training. Where small-sided games come up short is controlling the intensity level and the distance covered by each player. Fitter players tend to cover more distance and are more involved in play. If coaches have structured fitness activities, everyone is doing the same distance or intensity level. A consideration when implementing fitness training is to think about each position. Different positions in soccer require more or less different types of movements. For an example, midfielders will need to work more on endurance than a center back and strikers who will need additional strength to hold up defenders. Knowing positions and the demands of those positions will help you create a training program that will improve your team or your own fitness and physical aspect of the game. It should come at no surprise that when looking at two players who are of the same skill level, the one who is stronger will always outperform the weaker one. So, there is always room for improvement to become faster and stronger. Learn in this course why strength training is the basis for everything. By the end of this course, you should be able to identify different fitness components that are important in soccer, identify and perform different fitness tests for different fitness components, understand the benefits and importance of each fitness component, be able to explain overtraining, how it happens, and how to prevent it, Understand how to improve soccer play on your own using special acupressure points. Understand and experience the benefits of acupressure and apply it to your daily life. Know how to relieve emergency situations using acupressure points. It is intended through this course that you will learn how to properly condition soccer players to obtain a high level of fitness to play the game of soccer. So, enroll now and train your players like you've always wanted to today. We'll see you inside the course.